Hello, my fellow investors, and welcome back to another fundamental analysis video. Today, guys, we're going to take a look at one of your recommendations. I believe this is the last one that we got from a while ago. And um, yeah, we're going to take a look at this company. Obviously, I'm not going to spin the wheel because we already know the company that uh, we're essentially going to get. But we're going to take a look at this company, take a look at their fundamentals, and see if whether or not it's a good time to buy. So with that said, make sure you like, subscribe, comment. It really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well as well. Make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. If you like, join us on the Discord. The link is in the description below. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Okay, so we got the company, guys, Jackson Financials. Now, this company was brought up by none other than KLL. I believe the last time we did this, I kid you not, it was you also got last chosen. Sorry about that, KLL. It just keeps happening. I don't know why. But yeah, let's take a look at Jackson Financials. Here is the comment where she recommended it. And I do believe um, that I don't have the comment right in front of me, but I do believe that you told me that you took a look at it after... Uh, the first time or maybe the few couple times I've done this company before and out of your own discretion, not as of me, but just out of your own discretion and and then your own personal uh, research, you did invest in this company and it has been performing very, very well for you. So really, I'm glad for that. And if you could tell us more about that in the comment section, that would be awesome as well. So with that, guys, obviously, we got the company Jackson Financial. So let's start, of course, with the company profile. Now, it's a very basic company, Jackson Financials, through its subsidiaries, provides suits of annuities to retail investors in the United States. The company operates through three segments, retail annuities, institutional products, and closed life and annuity blocks. The real estate, the retail annuity segment offers various retirement income and savings products, including variable fixed index, fixed and payout annuities, as well as registered index link annuities and lifetime income solutions. Okay, I'm not going to read anymore because I think y'all got it. Guys, this is essentially a it's a bank, right? It's a bank, uh, you know, diversified financial services. So, you know, they're located in Lansing, Michigan, 3,428 employees founded in 2006. Now let's actually see their last earnings because, well, this is actually, uh, this is actually kind of crazy. We got Jackson Financial's non-gap EPS of $5.32 beats by 96 cents. However, the revenue of $1.25 billion misses by $450 million. And they're probably looking at that and you're like, Oh my goodness, that's uh you know almost half a mil half a billion dollar miss. Except it's actually a really really good thing because well um re guys, the revenue year over year of this 1.25 billion it is 228.9% year over year. So even though it is down 450 million dollars from the expectation, the year over year one Yo, I don't care if this is down a billion. This is still a lot, guys. This is still a lot, um, you know, from previous year. I don't really care if it doesn't meet analyst estimates. I'm just happy that it's in the positive year over year. And that is a massive positive number. Strong earnings driven by a 9% increase in total annuity assets under management from $227 billion as of June 30th, 2023 to $247 billion. Wow. As of June 30th, 2024. That's insane. Wow. That's a $20 billion increase just in a year, largely due to a higher equity market over the past 12 month period. Record levels of registered index link annuity RILA sales of $1.4 billion in the second quarter of 2024, up from $541 million in the second quarter of 2023 reflecting our continued retail annuity sales diversification efforts net income attributable to jackson financials common shareholders of 264 million or three dollars and 43 per diluted share in the second quarter of 2024 compared to the 1.2 billion or 14 dollars and 21 cents per diluted share in the second quarter of 2023 so now let us jump into the spreadsheet now Guys, this company is a bank, right? It's a diversified bank. It's a financials company. It doesn't have cash flow. So we have to use book value and tangible book value to make the assessment on this. So we got the company or the ticker JXN market cap of almost $7 billion. Now this PE is real small, 3.41. And uh, this current price is $92.25. Now this price is absolutely bonkers because well, you're about to see it right here. On the one year, this is up a whopping 148.6%. Wow. Just, 
Just wow. Year to date, this is up. Year to date, this is up 80.2%. Now, remember when I said at the beginning of the video that, hey, uh, you know, KLL, apparently, again, I don't know if she did or not. I don't know if she sold it. I don't know anything what's going on. Maybe she'll uh, gracefully uh, tell us. But I do remember her very much telling me that, hey, um, you know, thank you so much for letting me know about Jackson and your input because I did do my own research and I put money into it and it's been working out so good. If I can find the comment, I will pop it right here. But yeah, guys, I've covered this company, I think like twice now. Maybe this is the, the third time. I'm not really sure. And every single time I keep getting that, it seems like a really solid company. Now, we haven't taken a look at this in 10 year yet, but... It does seem of like a really, really interesting kind of um, kind of company, especially with everything that's currently happening. So let us now come back over here. In fact, we could take a look at this in the 52 week range. We could see $35.27 to we're at all time highs and $93 on the dot. As of, I just showed you guys $92.25 as of close. Now they do pay the dividend of $2.80, which is a yield. It's actually a pretty big yield. 3.06%, a parent ratio, a really good parent ratio, 16.62, no five year CAGR, two consecutive years of dividend payment. Now, if you take a look at this dividend history and we figure out why they don't have any CAGR is because of the fact that they just started paying off this dividend in 2021. So that's very, very reasonable right that's very very reasonable so why they don't have a CAGR. x dividend date passed as of september 5th payout date was september 19th and they do pay their dividends quarterly if you come back over here based off the current shares outstanding and this dividend they pay out 220.36 million dollars every single year in dividends so taking a look at now guys the fundamentals we can see here starting of course with net income that well, we don't really have 10 years of data, right? At best, we only got seven. And looking at this, we got $495.3 million to today of $2.3 billion. Now, the big thing was, of course, two years ago, where they hit a whopping $6.2 billion. So obviously, we don't have an increase here because we don't we don't have 10 years of data. I could easily, you know, just do this, but I'm not really going to do that for all of them because it would be very, very disingenuous, right? It, it really, really would. So I'm not going to necessarily do that, but I am going to give it a grade. You guys can see that it's actually pretty choppy. You know, for the past seven, six, five, four years ago, negatives, negative net income, only as of three, two, one, and today we've been in the positive for a significant amount of time here. So I'm going to have to give this, I'm going to have to give this guys like a, Oh boy, ooh, a 45% if I had to just put a number to it. Looking now at the revenue, looks very, very similar. We can see that it's not necessarily increasing. It really, really isn't. We got seven years ago of 6.2 billion to today of 4.5 billion. And um, it's choppy, right? It's choppy. Six years ago, massive spike up to 13.7 billion. And, you know, increased from five to two years ago, pretty consistently, and then just crashes as of one year ago. I could say high interest rates, most likely. So all in all, I'm going to have to give this, nah, I'm going to say a lot bigger than, you know, 45%. So I'm going to say at around like um, 70%. Looking now at the shares outstanding, we only got four years of this. And we can see that it's consistently decreasing, which is fairly surprising. 94.5 million shares today of 75.7 million shares. Guys, that looks absolutely perfect. I would like a little bit more data on this, but honestly, it looks really, really good. If they continue this, this is going to be absolutely great. Easy, 100%. And assets and liabilities, it is actually increasing at a nice steady pace. Ups and downs here and there, but overall, it's not looking too bad. Average assets of $324.1 billion and liabilities of $314.61 billion. A difference of $9.45 billion. I'm going to say an 80% when it comes to this one. And we can clearly see, guys, that this is a 72%. Honestly, my main issue would just be the net income. It's just because... I would like more consistency, but aside from that, it's not looking too bad. So now taking a look at the actual valuations, this is why I'm like, man, this company is just so, so strange. Take a look at the book value per share, guys. As of today, $126.17. That's up 26% from five years ago. And up the same value when it comes to the tangible book value per share. Now, Guys, if you all remember the current price, $92, if I'm not mistaken, 
yeah, we are significantly, I wouldn't say significantly, it's not a lot, but we are low compared to the book value, intangible book value, 0.73 points, guys, 0.73 for both. Basically, ideally, you want this number to be as close to one as possible. The fact that it's under one, it basically is telling us that it is undervalued, which is a rarity to see when it comes to banks. So even though the company has gone up a um, whopping, and when I say whopping, I mean whopping 80.2% on the year to date and 150% on the one year, technically it's still considered a good value based on the tangible book value per share. So there you guys have it. That really is it, right? That really is it. Again, not financial advice. And every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. I'm not telling anybody what to do. I didn't tell KLL to buy this company. I'm not telling anybody to buy this company. I'm just saying that from a 20, 50,000 foot view, it's looking like it should be a really decent price based off of the fundamentals and based off of the book value. Fundamentals aren't bad. They could be a little bit better, but honestly, not bad. Uh, so I look at this and yeah, you know, for me, for me, if I was willing to, if, if I was looking for like a, I wouldn't say like a risky play, but for like a, ooh, this looks good. This may have a lot of potential. This is one that I could say, yeah, it has a lot of potential based on these factors. I'm not saying that it's guaranteed to go up. All I'm saying is, is that it has the potential to go up. So again, not financial advice. Every investment is the present value of all future cash flow. And now looking at the dividend, we can see that putting in $6,215 at this $2.80, guys, this nets you almost $200 extra per year, $188.64, almost 50 bucks for a quarter, $47.16, and $15.72 per month. So all in all, when it comes to Jackson Financials, yeah, I'm going to stick to what I was saying prior. It could be better with the fundamentals. I fully... I fully give you guys that, right? We don't have enough. We don't have 10 years of data. We so In some cases, we don't even have five years of data. But based on what we do got and based off of the book value per share... This is looking insane, and actually, it could be a pretty interesting play. Right? It could be a really, really interesting play. Tell us what you guys think in the comment section below. Really do appreciate everybody's comments, and thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe, comment, really does help with the algorithm on YouTube as well. So make sure to follow us on XFL Investing. Feel like join us on the Discord. The link is in the description below. So with that said, peace out, and we'll see you all next time.